Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, I create tutorials for those entering the air combat sim world along with other aviation videos. Hope my content is what you're looking for. This video I'll go over the ramp start procedures or cold start in Falcon BMS. If you are familiar with the Viper start in DCS, that's great, but it only gets you so far. This video will help you start the Viper in Falcon BMS. Make sure you know where the documents are in Falcon BMS. Press a open docs folder in your launcher. Press that. This file, this folder will come up in your docs folder. The BMS manuals has the nav book and the training manual, which you need for this mission. This is the training manual. It has all the training missions that are comes with BMS. We'll be doing the ground ops, so you can click on that one. You can follow along. It has everything about the cautions and warnings, what matters uh, when it comes to the aircraft and how to start it, and it has all that in there. For the checklist and other manuals that come with, air, with the aircraft, go to the aircraft manuals and checklists. Go to the F-16. Got checklists here. And whichever block you're using, block 40. And you can open up the, the checklist right here and follow along or use it to your print it out and use it in the, the game as well. Go into tactical engagement. Go into training. Ground ops is a TE that creates a ground ops. You get a, a cold jet. You get to start it. Go and press commit. There's your jet right there. It is an F-16D-52. That is your jet right there. This is your flight plan. Make sure you do your click dance by clicking on either the data cartridge here or the data cartridge here. Click on the data cartridge. Press COM, COM plan to load your radios. Press IFF, IFF plan to load your IFF codes. Press Link 16, Link 16 plan, and it should change to your what you have in this mission. Being that we're Goblin, it is GN, the first and the last letter in our call sign and the number is 21. I am flight lead so I have that there. There's only one person in our package so that's all that matters. After all that press save. If you want to press the briefing, look at the briefing, scroll down to the bottom area, check the weather. Being that we're not taking off that doesn't really matter but that's where to find it if you need it. After that press take off. Make sure you're in ramp. It'll start in ramp and I'll see you in the cockpit. So now I'm in the first mission in BMS. It is the ground ops. It goes over ramp starting. For this, I'll show you how I ramp start. I will not particularly follow the checklist, but I will get everything done. That'll get you up in the air without having any problems. There are a few things that don't matter, but the checklist goes over it anyway. In this video, I'll go over things that truly matter, and I'll kind of skim over stuff that doesn't that doesn't really matter and doesn't give you any any degradation or consequences in uh, BMS. So first, you're in the pit. You can look down. You have your your, your knee boards down there. So that's simple. Press Alt C, let go, and then press P. That'll make it go away. Disable Tracker R here. So now, close the canopy to make it quieter. But if you close the canopy while your JFS is running, the JFS will shut off, and you'll have to spend two minutes having the crew chief recharge your JFS to start again. Go and close the spider. Oh, that's good to go. Everything in the pit is good enough to uh, start. You don't have to check anything. There's no consequences if you miss something before you do anything. But first, you need to make sure that the master arm is in on, which is, is deep by default on. Tank inerting is not implemented, so just leave it the way it is. Engine feed is in norm. You need to make sure you have that on, or else you'll randomly have an engine shut off in flight. Also, go over here to the right side, underneath your armrest. Make sure you go to arm source is to norm. If you don't do that, you'll overheat your avionics and you'll burn out all of your avionics. And you won't be able to use your MFDs, your HUD, your radios, or anything along those lines. So make sure you do those two things first. After that, main power to battery. The lights will come on. There are no consequences here, so you can do that as fast as you want. What I like to do is go in the test, make sure that all four branches are on. And they are on, so I can go back to norm. Once that's good, go to main power. You can turn on your radios to talk to your multiplayer buddies if they're on the frequency or if you're doing a procedure. Uniform 2 is the tower. So now you can turn on the JFS, turn on your lights the way you want to, and then go ahead and go over here to the right side. Pay attention to your engine instruments. Make sure that at the minimum your RPM percent is above 20% before you place your throttle into the idle position starting the engine. You want to monitor at your F-TIT as well. Make sure it doesn't go above 750. There's a consequence of that. If it goes above 750 or quickly goes above 900 and quickly rises, then you have a hot start. You need to shut off the engine immediately so you can catch it and have the crew chief recharge your JFS uh, in, that, in that sense. And how to recharge, you press T 
and there's seven right there, request JFS recharge, and it takes about two minutes. So once your JF, your RPM percent is above 20, 24 is more, is, is a lot better, you can go over here to the left side, you can either click on this lever right here for the idle uh, detent to put the throttle in, into idle, or you can use your button of choice. You want to click on that, the throttle goes forward. Now monitor your RPM percent, monitor your hide oil pressure, If make sure that goes away around 40%. If that does not go off, that means you don't have any oil in the aircraft and you need to shut off as quickly as possible so you won't get a hot start or a hung start. If tits going up pretty nicely, make sure your engine light goes away around 55%, about 60%. So there, there's an engine went away, 60% is there. F10 is in the normal, as you saw the power came on, and my hydraulic A and B are good, no consequences there, they're, they're usually in a good spot once you have a good start. F10 comes back down, goes back down to a idle temperature, and that's a good start and you're good to go. Next is to move your controls around, make sure that all the stuff is good, turn on my track R again, make sure all your stuff is good. Open up your speed brakes. I probably can't see them because I'm in a I'm in a B model here or a, a, a D model. So my speed brakes do open. Make sure you move your move around your flickus around, and it all moves around pretty good. After that, over here to the the right side, right side. Turn on your MMC station, MFDs, upfront controls, data link. Map is not implemented. EGI to norm. Norm is not, our stored heading is not implemented, you got to use norm. It takes a little bit longer, but you'll be a little bit more busy, so it, it won't be as long as you, as you think it is. So this is MIDS, which is link 16. Make sure that you turn on the link 16 ten, at least 10 seconds after you turn on the MMC to give the MIDS time to give to uh, perform a, a IBIT, a built-in test. If you don't give it that time, it'll give you some issues, so just make sure you wait the 10 seconds. For, for us, it's been about 10 seconds, so I will turn it on now. MIDS is on. Turn on oxygen regulator. That kind of makes sure that your pilot won't pass out when you're at high altitude. Also, turn on your anti-ice up here. If you don't turn that on, when you go into a cloud, your engine will seize up, and you might have issues flying without an engine. Going up here to the sensor power, you got your left and right hard points. If you don't have a sniper pod or a HTS harm targeting pod, then you don't need these on, so you can leave those off if you want. FCR, which is your radar, radar altimeter to standby, and moving down here to your HUD. This basically changes the different things on your HUD. Oh, let me turn that on real quick. So HUD is on, so it changes different things on your HUD, but what I usually use is the, the most forward position. DED data, uh, FPL, fault list, so I usually have it on the fault list, so when you do have a fault, it'll actually come, it'll actually illuminate and come on your HUD as you're looking forward so you know what's wrong with the with the uh, aircraft, and it kind of mirrors what's down here, so that's good to have. Last switch here, don't click that because it turns on your backup HUD indicator, so if you, if you see this and there's no HUD like you're normally used to, make sure you come back down here and uh, turn that off because you accidentally turn it on. This AR, your radar altimeter, is blinking because you have it in auto, and your radar altimeter is off, so you can either turn on your radar altimeter, it'll make it go away, or you could go into Barrow, so it won't force the aircraft to look for a, a radar altimeter. You can put your radar altimeter to standby, and it'll actually make it not blink as well. Now, down here is all your lights, so use those as you need to. Up here, it has the alignment, it's uh, been two and a half minutes when it comes, or 2.4 minutes when it comes to alignment. Make sure that uh, this goes to ready and it starts blinking. That means you could turn it, turn your EGI to nav, and you should be fully aligned. There's no reason to, to align it any sooner than that. Just make sure you wait till it's ready. It usually takes about uh, three or four minutes for it to go. So this will start blinking, and the align will start blinking on there, and that's when you know that you're ready to turn your EGI to nav. Moving over here to the left side, I usually do my flickus test again just to make sure that it looks good, and it does look good. I turn on the probe heat. No, no degradation or consequences when it comes to probe heat. 
none of these have any consequences. They got the OBOGS bit, fire detect, and your all of your lights in there. There's no consequences here. When you look on your MFDs, go to test. Has a couple of failures there. So make sure you do a flickus reset of your flight controls. Do a clear of the, of your your fault codes, and then go ahead and do a flickus bit. This flickers bit has severe consequences. If you forget to do this, if you forget to do this and take off, then you'll have a, you have a possibility of having a flight control problem, and it'll give you some really bad issues up there. So make sure you do a, a flight control bit before you take off. If this fails, it'll say fail underneath. So just go ahead and press the flickers reset, reset your MFDs, and try it again. Maybe you want to cycle your flight controls, but uh, those are some good ways to get it to work again. But just try it again and it should work after that. Next is to put your master on to standby, your master IFF to standby. If you haven't already, put your lights to however you however way you want to. I usually put my ECM to standby as well to warm up. See how the, pa the bit went away. It didn't say fail, so it passed. Another way to see that it passed is to go to the, your uh, one of your main pages, the main page, put a flickus that has bit pass up here and you did pass your bit. If you look up here my ready is blinking on the DED and on the HUD it has a line So now it is time to turn on your uh, your INS to nav. Notice how, how there's no steer point lines or steer circles or anything on here. Once you go to nav right click on it, correction, left click on it or use the scroll wheel. You can go to nav and now your steer points and everything p pops up on your MFDs uh, as, as you were looking up in 2D. Going over here to your RWR, being that it's off, go ahead and press it on. RWR, jammer, MWS, missile warning detect. Missile warning system is not implemented, but you could turn on the switch anyway. Got your chaff, got your flare, and you can put your mode in standby so you uh, don't can't accidentally pop off flares and chaff when you take off. Don't mess with this jettison switch. If you have it on and you take off, it'll jettison all of your countermeasures. So make sure you have that off. Sim symbology of your HUD or your head mounted display. So it's right here. It's uh, not aligned right now, but I'll go over that later. So make that kind of go away. You'll press down or hold down on your display management switch and it'll make it go away. So you could we'll, uh, align it later. After all that, go to your blank page, go to DTE. It says link to 16 and it required. It just means that it needs a load. Everything has been on for a little bit, so you should be good to turn on or uh, do your load of all of your DTC to load up all of your MFDs, your radios when it comes to COM1, COM2, IFF, and your link 16. Go ahead and press this button up here on load, and it'll start the load. While it's doing that, you can turn on your CNI switch to go to upfront control, so you can use your DD radios there. See here it's going to link 16. It is loading all of your link 16 for information and you'll just let it do its thing. Got my master caution on so I'll just reset it there. And uh, there's link 16. It's all set. Still loading the last couple things and and it's loaded. So now if you have custom presets for all of your MFDs it doesn't go into that preset automatically. Now you have to cycle through dogfight mode and then come back into nav and it'll set all your presets. So go into dogfight mode, then come back to nav, and now all of your MFDs are preset to where you set them up in 2D and in your INI file. So now would be a good time to set up your radios, go to whatever channel you need to be on. Uh, when it comes to COM2, we're on the tower frequency, so that's good to go. Do your system test. This is, there's no de no consequences for this, but I usually do it to set up my volume or my threat my threat volume to get so it won't be too loud. Go ahead and set up your seat. Being that there's nothing above me, I can arm my seat because I don't want to eject into the canopy. Next, get the altimeter setting. Press T until you get to the page where it has request Q&H. Q two nine eight four for the Q and H. Make sure you're on uniform two or the appropriate channel for the tower, or else they won't respond to you because you're not on the right channel. So now we could 
align our head mounted display, go and press list, press zero, press recall, then you'll dauber to the right. Now it's on course. So now I need to enable my head mounted display by uh, DMS down by holding it. And you have the course there with the asterisk next to it. I'm going to press zero. Press zero right here. Button press zero. Now to, to align the head mounted display, just kind of look to where the crosshairs meet and then use the cursor enable switch or the cursor enable button to use that you use to move your radar. Just press that down and it'll align it. You don't need to hold it down, you just need to press it once and it should align. Press zero, it'll reset. Press zero again to load your azimuth and your elevation. So you can move the cursor around to move the elevation around. So make sure you get it to where you want it to be. Press zero, press zero again. This is the roll. So you can move your, manipulate your cursor switch to roll it around to make sure that it aligns with the bottom of the crosshairs. Press zero and it is aligned. Now your head mounted display is aligned. Now you can hold DMS down to make it go away and continue your checks. So here you got the IDM. You can change it to Link 16, but that has no implementation at all. But you can change it to Link 16 if you want to make it look a little better. Once all that's good, you can now take your IFF out of standby, put it into norm. You can start squawking now. Now you can remove the chalks, remove the EPU safety pin, and request for departure from the tower. Now turn on your taxi light. I'm ready for takeoff, so I'm going to bump up the throttle a little bit. So I'm moving, going to hit the brakes. The brakes work. Don't forget your nose wheel steering. And I'm going to continue forward. Looking around. Nose wheel steering to the left to keep on the center line. And that's how you start the F-16 in BMS.